Greetings. The date is September 7, 2015. I recently had a birthday, which I mentioned in my last adventure in speed reading, and so I had a few books added to this pile of DC Comics graphic novels. Uh, three books from my birthday. That was Superman Secret Origin by Jeff Johns and Gary Frank, Deadshot Beginnings by John Ostrander and Kim Yale, and Green Arrow uh, Year One by Andy Diggle and Jacques. Uh, those three books, and I got a few other books that weren't DC Comics, but those three books have been added to the pile, and I also got another book uh, shortly after my birthday that I had actually ordered about a week or so before my birthday, and that was Superman Endgame. And so those four books have been added to the pile, but I was able to read uh, three books in the last week, and I'm going to talk about each of those, and I'm going to try to spend less than two minutes on each of these books that I'm going to talk about uh, very briefly, and then uh, I may do a full-blown video on a couple of these. Uh, throughout the week. We'll just see uh, how much I end up talking about each of these as we go through this video. Uh, first off, we're going to talk about a book that was added to the pile last week, and that is Superman, The Adventures of Nightwing and Flamebird. This is a batch of 1970s uh, stories from uh, Superman Family, and it is about these two guys who live in the bottle city of Kandor, which is a shrunken Kryptonian city, and they fight crime as Nightwing and Flamebird, and uh, they are basically the Kryptonian version of Batman and Robin. And uh, this book is probably my favorite Superman book that I've read in the last couple of weeks. I enjoyed it a lot more than uh, Superman the Wedding and Superman Transformed, which I talked about last week. Uh, and it's basically uh, just a lot of really fun science fiction-y concepts uh, that are filtered through uh, the really fun, pulpy uh, 1970s atmosphere of DC Comics. And that's like the best of two worlds right there. Um, the one problem that this book has is that it collects a whole bunch of 10-page stories. None of these stories are full comic book length, and so I don't ever get the feeling that any of these issues get to really explore the story that they are telling. It's just kind of bam, 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 we have to get through this story because we only have 10 pages to tell this story. And so a lot of times, all of these stories really feel rushed. And I still had a lot of fun reading it, but I really wish that these characters could have been more developed and this world could have been more developed in this book. And true, the Bottle City of Kandor can be developed in many different Superman stories that you can go and read. These particular characters, though, I've never seen them in any other Superman book other than this one. So I kind of felt like these characters weren't developed enough because each story is only 10 pages long. And so by the time you're starting to get used to a character, it's time to get on to the next story. But overall, I like this more than both of the Superman stories that I read last week. Uh, I would say it's the best Superman book I've read recently. I even liked it more than Superman Endgame, which was added to the pile this week, and I also read it this week. Uh, this is not a very good book, unfortunately. Uh, this collects uh, several different comics that were happening right at the end of the 20th century, right at the very beginning of the 21st century, and basically uh, Y2K is happening in Metropolis, and this version of Brainiac from the future uh, comes to Metropolis and basically upgrades Metropolis so that it looks really futuristic. And the entire book is Superman fighting Brainiac 13. That's basically all that it is. Uh, if you'll recall, a big complaint that I had about uh, the Superman The Wedding trade paperback and Superman Transformed, mostly Superman The Wedding, was that it was all just boring wedding stuff. There really wasn't a whole lot of superhero stuff going on in that superhero comic. It was all just boring stuff, like who's going to be the best man? Am I going to rent a tux? Uh, what's Lois's dress going to look like? Where are Clark and Lois going to live? That was all the conflict in that book. It really wasn't a lot of actual interesting stuff. And I feel like this book suffers from the exact opposite problem. Instead of having a lot of character stuff and a lot of interesting conflicts going on. It's just one big, really long fight scene. Uh, not a fight scene between Superman and Brainiac, but rather Superman fighting against Brainiac's influence on the planet. And it feels like a really big deal. It feels like this huge, epic battle of Superman versus Brainiac, and he's stronger than he's ever been before, and it has all these lasting ramifications, because I remember reading some Superman comics from around this time, where Metropolis looks really futuristic because of Brainiac infecting the city. And it's a big, huge story, but it feels very hollow and empty. It feels kind of like if Michael Bay was doing a big action-packed Superman story. There's very little character here. It's mostly just Superman fighting the effects of Brainiac taking over the world. And almost the whole thing is just that. It's just a lot of fight scenes and stuff. And so I feel like this is, in a lot of ways, very similar to The Wedding. It just goes in the complete opposite direction as that book. And so... Well, uh, by and large, I didn't really think this book was worthwhile. Uh, if you saw this somewhere and you wanted to pick it up, 
I wouldn't recommend buying it. Uh, maybe if it's really cheap, you can buy it and uh, waste an afternoon reading it, but it's not one of the best Superman books that you're ever going to read. And then also, uh, I read uh, Green Arrow Year One, which I got for my birthday. And uh, this is a really good book. Uh, I had heard a lot of people say that it was really good. Uh, around the time when I started getting into Arrow, I was hearing people say that this book was an influence on Arrow. And I can definitely see that here. I see a lot of Arrow in this book. In fact, reading this, uh, it's very hard for me to think of this as the DC Comics version of Green Arrow. This feels a lot closer to the TV version of Arrow. It doesn't feel like the Green Arrow of the comics. It feels a lot closer to Arrow of TV. And it's not. It is set in the DC Universe, but it feels so closer, so much closer to the TV version than it does the comics version. That's how much of an influence this has on the Arrow TV show. And if you're one of those people like me who thinks that Arrow has gone to the dogs lately and is just kind of terrible, uh, this book will both be awesome for you because it's a really good story, but it will also make you sad because it will remind you that Arrow kind of sucks right now and that it should be this good, but it's not. Uh, this is entirely, almost entirely set on the island that uh, Green Arrow is straight on and it's not called Leon Yu like it is in the TV show I don't think it even has a name here it's just an island and there's this drug trade going on on this island and uh, basically Ollie A has to survive because he's just a spoiled rich brat and B uh, he finds this drug trade thing going on and he has to kind of put a stop to that and so it's got a lot in common with the Arrow TV show if you watched Arrow seasons 1 and 2 and I guess parts of season 3 uh, China White or uh, Chien Nei Wei whatever she's called um, she is in this book and she I believe this is where she first appeared uh, and she's also in the Arrow TV show and so if you liked Arrow, if you wanted uh, to really get into some stuff that's very similar to that TV show, uh, I would say Green Arrow Year One is a fantastic book that you need to read. Uh, I once said that the Mike Grail run of Green Arrow comics, the Longbow Hunters miniseries, and then uh, the stories that follow that, the ongoing Green Arrow series, I once said that those books are probably the closest that you'll get to the Arrow TV show. Uh, now I stand corrected because uh, Year One is a lot closer to the TV show. It's really good. Uh, uh, I was surprised by how much I loved it. Uh, this is maybe even the best book that I read this week. I really enjoyed the Superman uh, uh, Nightwing and Flamebird. I really enjoyed that trade paperback, but I think this tops it out as just being all around a better story. Not just a good superhero story, but a good story, period. And so, uh, like I said, I added four books to the pile this week. One that I got in the mail, and then uh, three that I got from my birthday haul, and then I was able to read three books this week. And so, uh, the pile looks like this now. Now, uh, you can see that it more or less looks the same as it did last week. And I did order some other books online, so you should be expecting next week uh, that I will have added another couple books to the pile. But here soon, the pile is going to start shrinking. If you've been watching for the last few weeks and you've been saying, come on, the pile just kind of seems to be in standstill. He doesn't actually seem to be uh, taking anything off the pile. Very soon, I'm going to be taking stuff off the pile. I'm going to be slowing down on ordering stuff. But I, uh, on my birthday, or when I opened these presents, I was thinking, you know what, I'm going to go ahead and buy myself a few books. Uh, I feel like uh, I can buy a few cheap books, uh, and so I didn't spend a whole heck of a lot of money, but I bought a few books that will be going on the pile, and you'll be seeing those next week. So that's all I have to say about this week's adventure in speed reading. I hope that you guys uh, liked this video. If you did, be sure to like, share, comment, and subscribe. I'll be doing a couple more videos throughout the rest of this week. Hopefully you guys will check those out in the coming days. In the meantime, I'll see you guys later. Have a great rest of the day.